Hey everybody, welcome to Real Men Craft 2. It's me, Richard. Uh, today it's Wednesday, August 9th. Uh, finally, I'm going to show you all how to do this rope. Yeah, this beaded rope. Yep. So, like I always say, you can't find that you perfect chain to, you know, wear a pendant or your cro your cross, your crucifix or, or anything. Or if you just want a really, really nice, you don't want to wear silver, you don't want to wear gold, but you want to have a really cool looking chain to match your men's shirt, button down shirt, a black dress, a really pretty dress, a blouse, a tank top, just create it. Yeah, and I'm gonna show you all how to uh, create your own uh, just by using three colors of seed beads. Um, yeah, so before we get into today's video, uh, I'm, I, I wanna tell all of you, thank you so much for sending the love and the uh, prayers and thoughts to uh, Marcus's family. I'm gonna take a sip of coffee really quick. But thank you everybody. Um, even though we don't know these people personally, never met them, just the thoughts and the prayers and the kind words mean so much to people like that. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys are having a great week. Yeah, you guys just saw me yesterday, didn't you? Um, hopefully you're not getting tired of me yet, but, uh, yeah, we're gonna, uh, flip around. I'm gonna make you guys watch my... <laughs> my intro and then we are going to flip around i'm going to do some camera magic take you guys down to my beating uh, mat my beating mat is not messy but you know hey when you've been beating for 50 years this is uh my business i use a bead on it board bead on it boards are not cheap for a little tiny eight inch by eight inch which is the square ones they start at like 26 bucks. They're all handmade, they're hand created. They have, um, I don't even remember what the warranty is, but they have hundreds and hundreds of different uh, fabrics. A bead on it board is great because um, you're gonna see on my bead uh, board today that I'm using a segmented uh, sectional bead tray which is the uh, no more oops bead tray that i just like to sit on top of my bead on a board when i'm just doing something like this but a bead on a board is actually really cool if you're using seed beads or anything when you pour out your seed beads as soon as it hits these bead on it boards the the beads will lie whole up yeah so you don't have to flatten them you just yeah it's amazing um i've been using one for probably 16, 17 years. Uh, the one I'm using today is a 12 by 20 inch. Uh, it runs about $124, but you can get them 50% off on sales. Uh, but yeah, just look up beadonitboard.com or just go to potomacbeads.com. Potomac Beads now owns uh, the name and the production of the Bead on It Boards. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna flip you guys around and we are gonna work on this chain. Okay, so what you're gonna need, you're gonna need some wire protectors or wire guards, thread guards, and everybody calls them different, something different. You guys are gonna use a uh, toggle of your choice and you need to put a jump ring on here because we're gonna, well, we're gonna start. So I am using eight pound fire line thread. Now, if you guys have never used fire line thread, I buy it in these huge, gigantic 
1500 yard spools um this is another thing that's not cheap one of these spools will run you about uh i don't even know how much it is this spool is probably 15 years old i'm going to condition my thread because uh when i when you use smoke see this black stuff yeah, it comes off on your fingers. So um, I just use a dryer sheet, a, a fabric softener sheet. I'm gonna put the thread in there, run it through there, and look at all that, that black stuff that comes off. Yeah, you don't want that on your beads. So I'm gonna condition my fire line. Now you guys can use, uh, you guys can also use KO thread for this. KO comes in, I think, God, like 30 different colors. You can use Nozu Sunoku thread, um, but you can't just use sewing thread. No, that's not gonna work. It has to be a beading thread. So I'm gonna thread my needle. You're gonna use an arm span. Of, of your beading thread or anything that's comfortable for you we we are going to be adding thread so don't worry about uh, running out so we're gonna use three colors of course I'm gonna use lime green a matte opaque uh, per, uh, lavender and then I'm using a, um, a, a shiny black um, and then this is a lime green uh, centered uh, clear yellow. So yeah, I wanted the three different uh, beads. I, I bead right-handed. Now, those of you that bead left-handed, as we start this, uh, I will show you the difference. But um, we are not gonna tie any knots, so. We're always going to go, um, since I bead right-handed, we're going to go from right to left. Or you can go from left to right, whichever, it doesn't matter. So, you guys are going to notice that I've got some uh, opaque black beads in here because I had a bead spill a couple weeks ago. But um, we're going to start out by picking up, first off, these are size 11 seed beads, which is your traditional... Um, 99.9% .9 uh, time that we use seed beads, we use an 11. So, uh, yeah. So we're going to pick up three of your color A, three of your color B. I'm going to drop those down to my thread. I am going to leave about a 12-inch tail. And then I'm going to... Take my needle up through all six of them again. Now, when you pull this, it's going to put color B right next to color A. We're going to go up through color A again, which is my black. You always just want to hold these firmly when you take your needle through them. I'm going to go down through my color B, which is my lavender. And we are going through all of these twice just to strengthen the first uh, round. Now, you're gonna notice um, we're gonna do ladder stitch, which is what we're doing. Now, if you wonder why it looks like, why they call it ladder stitch, it looks just like the rungs of a ladder. Now we're gonna pick up color C. So we're gonna pick up three. Now this is the only time we're gonna pick up three beads. From here on in, we're only gonna pick up one of two different colors, depending um, on where we're at. This is the only time you're gonna pick up three beads. So the thread's coming out of the bottom of your B bead. I'm picking up the C. We're gonna go down through the B. Hold that in place. Put that right next to the purple. 
And now we're going to go down through color C. Now we have to get this into a tube. So right now, it just looks like a flat piece. So we're coming out of the bottom of our, our third color. We're gonna take our needle up through all three of the first beads we put on. Now when we pull this, it's going to make it like a little triangle. Now, as you can see, we don't have color A attached to color C in any way. So we're going to go back. We're coming out of the top of color A. We're going to go down through our color C. And this, is, this might be a little bit loose or cattywampus at first. So now we're going to go back up through color A again. Now, if you look, they're all three connected and they're in a tight little triangle shape. Yep. So I always like to have my starting thread coming out of the bottom. Okay. So I'm, I'm just going to hold this toward me. We're right now coming out of the black. I'm going to go back up through the line. So we're going to go down or toward you out of our color C. And now that puts my working thread, which is right here, and my beginning tail opposite ends. So now we can start working on our rope. Now you're always going to tell yourself oh, what color am I going to pick up next you're always going to pick up the bead that your thread is coming out of first and then the bead that's next to it so I'm going to pick up a lime and a lavender I'm going to go down two beads hold that firmly pop those into place and I'm going to rotate so now I just went down those two purples you're going to go up one of the next color so that's all we're going to do from here on in We're going to pick up two beads. We're going to go down two and up one. So now you're going to see here, well, you're going to tell yourself, Richard, I only have one space here left. How am I going to pick up two beads? The second step, you always only pick up one bead. So we're going to go down two of the next color. Rotate. Pop that third bead into place, and we're going to go up one bead. Now, when you go up that one bead, you're going to want to pull this to the right. And you're going to notice now, already, it's starting to twist. Yep. So here we go again. We're coming out of the purple, so we're going to pick up purple and the next color, which is black. We're going to go down to the black, rotate, pop those two little beads into place, and I'm going to go up through just one of my lime. We're going to place that last bead. So we're going to go down two lavenders. I'm going to rotate it in my hand. And I'm going to go up 
one black. So now we've got five beads on top of each other, five of each color. So we're starting all over. We're coming out of the black. So we're gonna pick up a black. The next color is a lime. So we're gonna go down through two limes, rotate it in my hand, and up one lavender. So we have to pick, this is where we pick up one. This is step two, so we're only gonna pick up one bead, which is our lavender. We're gonna go down to black. Rotate it in our hand. Pop that little bead into place. So we went down one black. We're gonna go up. So we pick up that one last bead. We're gonna go down two blacks, rotate it, up one. So remember the first step is always we're gonna pick up two beads. So we're gonna pick up the color that our thread is coming out of, or the color that our, yeah, the color of bead that our thread is coming out of, which is green. And the next color, which is lime. So this is always step one. We're going to pick up two beads. We're going to go down two. Rotate it. Ouch, and I just poked myself in the finger. Yep, I poked myself good, too. So let's get that working tail out of our way. Pop those beads into place, rotate it, go up one. This is step two, where we only pick up one bead. We're gonna go down two. Rotate. Go up one. Actually, I'm glad I poked myself in on camera so you guys can see. Even I make mistakes. Now, I've been beating, like uh, everybody knows, over 50 years. So that's down two, and we're gonna go up one. And rotate. So we're back to step one. We're gonna pick up the color that our thread's coming out of, and the next color. We're gonna go down two. Rotate it, up one. And you can see it's already twisting. So that that's all the whole necklace is. So we're gonna continue doing this. So step two is always just one bead, down two. I knew I, I have a little knot there. So I'm gonna stick my needle in that loop and pull up. There we go, got rid of that knot. So I went down two, rotated it, up one black. Pulled to the right. So back to step one. We're gonna pick up a black or whatever color our thread's coming out of and the next color. <laughs> my glasses just fell off my face. I'm gonna go down two. Rotate. 
rotate it and up one. Now we're going to do step two. Step two is we only pick up one bead. Go down two. Rotate it. Go up one. So we're back to step one. Two beads. Go down two. Rotate. Up one. And you're always going to... Um, it doesn't matter whether you're picking up the two beads or the one. You're always going to go down two beads and up one. So we're at step two where we're going to pick up the, only the one bead. I'm going to go down two. Pop those beads into place. Rotate it. And when I say rotate it, I'm just rotating this in my hand. Rotate it, and you're always going to go up through one bead. Now we're going to do step one again. We're going to pick up two beads. Go down two. Rotate. Always make sure that bead lays flat. Go up one. Step two is we only pick up one bead. So if you have to write that down, here's what you're gonna write. I'm always going to do a repeat of step one and step two. Step one, Is pick up two beads, go down two, rotate, go up one. Step two, pick up one bead, rotate, go down two, up one. I'm going to repeat these two stitches, or these two steps, for the entire length of my piece. So now I'm back to you guys. So I'm doing step two. I picked up one bead. I'm going to go down through two. Rotate. Go up through one. Back to step one. I'm going to pick up two beads. Go down two. Rotate, go up through that one. Now I'm going to do step two. Step two is always going to be the same. We're only picking up one bead. I'm going to go down two of the next color. Pop that bead into place. Rotate it. Go up one. Now, this is really, this spiral is really, really, really fast. You're going to notice it right away. Which is why I love doing this rope. So we're back to step one. We're going to pick up two beads. Go down two. And go up one. Step two is one bead. I'm going to go down two of the next color. Rotate. Go up through one. So now I'm going to repeat steps one and two until I get a couple more inches. I'll be back, you guys. Okay, so uh, I've been working on this for about 20 minutes. I've got four inches, about four inches. Now, yeah, I had to put a bandaid on. My finger was bleeding. You are going to come to the point where 
like all good things have to come to an end, you're going to run out of thread. Uh, I never work my thread any shorter than five, six inches. So here's how we're going to, let me zoom out a little bit. Here's how we are going to tie on a new thread. Now, I never use knots unless I have to. But just remember, we're coming out of, well, we're at the beginning. We're getting ready to start step one. So it doesn't matter. You know, you don't have to remember what bead you came out of. So we're going to take our working thread. We're going to go down three or four of the next color. Actually, you can just follow the same color down. I went down eight beads. You're going to rotate. You're going to go right like you're going up because you want it to match your bead thread. So you're going to go up the next color. And we're just going to zigzag through the beads, pulling tightly. Until we have worked most of our thread in. You want to follow the bead. You know, you want to follow the bead path, same, you know, up and down through. I mean, like when I say that, you don't want to go somewhere where, you know, you're going to have this big gap. You always want to go directly straight across. I always uh, tell people that are new to beading, just... Uh, Always take your thread where you've already gone. So you can just like, I can see right there where I stepped up through a lavender. I'll just step up again. So we're gonna do that. off pull that nice and tight now you have to have sharp scissors when you do bead work uh, I have oh god three or four different pairs of scissors however I use a bur a thread burner um, I use the thread zap now when you burn your thread you're gonna push the button, burn it about a quarter of an inch away from the beadwork. And then, see this little burr of thread? Where did I burn off? Okay, so right here, coming out of this purple bead, right? Let me see if I can find it. Right here, this little thread nub. You're gonna take your thread burner and just continue to melt it right there. Gone, you don't even see it. So now, we're gonna take our new piece of thread and do the same thing. Now we're gonna take our new piece of thread and we're gonna come back here about a half inch, go up through a couple beads, zigzag, zigzag, and come out of any one of your top beads and continue with step one. So, right here, I'm gonna show you how to put on your first end of your clasp. Now, this is, remember where I told you, you know, to uh, make sure you leave yourself about hmm, 10 to 12 inches at the beginning. 
This is why. I'm going to zoom out a little bit more here. So we're going to put our thread back on. As I have a, a, a minus one on my fingertips. And the middle finger is the worst finger to ever have a band-aid on. Okay, so coming out of the top, you're going to see uh, people that do beadwork where they <clears throat> will go right through their toggle. They will string, you know, right through their toggle and just attach their toggle. I never do it like that. I always use a wire guard because... When I use a wire guard, if that toggle or clasp were to break later on, I don't have to cut my beaded uh, work apart to uh, put a new toggle on. So coming out of any bead, we're going to pick up our wire guard. Now the wire guard looks like, let me get that piece of fuzz out of there. The wire guard looks like a little horseshoe. There's a channel up this side, and you'll see that little hole right there. We're gonna go up one side. Now along the curved part, there's a thread channel right there. You wanna make sure that your thread lies in there. So we're gonna go up and over the horseshoe and down the other side. Now, I know my thread's in that channel because I can see it right there. Now, with three beads, we're not going to have an exact other half to go over. See what I'm saying? So, if you want this nice and centered, we're going to go from the black over to this thread bridge directly over here. Now, I'm just going to go right underneath that thread bridge from the outside up to the inside. Now when I lightly pull on that, see how nicely centered that is? So now I'm gonna go back up through this side, up and over, and I'm gonna go back down the black beads. Now, I did this on purpose, so you're going to notice, oh my goodness, there's thread right there. What did I do? All you got to do is uncatch it. So I'm going to go up and over, back, I'm going to go down, about two or three black beads. Making sure that that thread lies right there and that, that, oh, I hate this band-aid. Okay, so, now when I pull on this, it's not going anywhere. It's, it's snug. It's nice and tight. Now I'm going to work this thread the same way. I'm just going to go back and forth through my beads. Oh, I hate this band-aid. I might be able to take it off. I'm gonna move over to the lime. Go down through. Four or five. If you can't get through, um, just if you can only get through one bead, that's fine. And then I'm going to go back up through about four or five blacks. Pull that nice and tight. 
once again. I'm going to try to do this without my middle finger. You know what? I'm going to try to take this off. Oh, that's where I got a hangnail the other night. It hurt. But uh, make sure your finger isn't still bleeding. So, once again, I'm going to take my thread. I'm going to burn it about a quarter of an inch away from the piece. I'm just going to hold the button in. And you can see that that thread actually, when it melts, it makes like a little knot there. So you don't have to worry about that coming off. So now, here's the great part. Watch this. So I'm going to take my toggle. I'm going to open my jump ring. And remember, I'm going to grab my other pliers. We always open a jump ring away from each other, like this. You never want to pry just open. So now watch. Here's the clever part. So now, especially if you sell your jewelry, you don't know what size, you know, that piece of jewelry is going to go to. So this way, it makes it look more professionally finished. And if anybody didn't like that toggle or that, that uh, lobster claw and they wanted a fancy toggle like uh, something like this, one that swivels, you can easily take that lobster claw off. Because you've got that jump ring here and put the toggle of their choice. So this end is done. So we're going to continue. I'm going to add a new thread to this side. And I'm going to continue on until I finish the length of my necklace or my bracelet, whatever you're going to do. But watch this. So now when I'm ready to put this on. I'm going to go this way because I'm right-handed. I'm going to slide this chain through the jump rings. Now, here's the cool part. When you can't find a chain to go with a dress or a shirt, or a man shirt, and you want something to match your pendant, beat it. Yep, create it. So I'm making a mess of my beads right here. <laughs> Thanks everybody for coming by. Thanks for watching this beginner three bead spiral herringbone. I cannot wait to finish this and I will have it on in my next video. Take care you guys. I'm Richard with Real Men Craft 2. Any questions, don't forget, drop them down below here in the basement. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Do all that good YouTube stuff. And uh, hey, thanks everybody for stopping by. Oh, I wanted to show you something else. So I'm just making a mess of my beads. So, I've got this rope I just made. Now, if I wanted to put it on my other pendant, it doesn't matter if the toggle is gold, because it's going to be behind my neck. No one's going to see it. Watch this. I'm going to slide that right on. I can wear it with my other Maleficent. Cool, huh, you guys? That is the magic and the fun of making jewelry and beadwork. So once again, you guys, I'm Richard with Real Men Craft 2. 
Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. Thanks for time. Thank, thanks for taking time out of your day. God, I love those colors. So totally Maleficent. <laughs> you can't tell. It's the same color as my bead on it board. Yeah, my bead on it board is lavender, fuchsia, orange, uh, hot pink, and my favorite color, lime. So take care, you guys. I'm Richard with Real Men Craft 2. Once again, thanks a lot. I'll see you all in the next video. Take care. Bye.